Hey peeps, we are back. We're talking the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, season four, episode four. And again, I have to say, I am really enjoying Salt Lake City this season. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. So the show picks up. It's the next morning. Meredith has sent all the girls a text message letting them know wear their t-shirts and meet her out by the pool. Now, you know, Angie, Miss Sourpuss, she is upset because she doesn't have a t-shirt and she thinks that Meredith is being petty by not having a t-shirt for her. Ma'am, pull yourself together and turn the brain all the way up. You were not invited. Why would she have extra t-shirts just for you? You were not invited. Just pull yourself all the way together and realize you were not invited, okay? And then you showed up and acted like a complete idiot, which is why you were not invited. I'm just saying. Anyway, I thought it was hilarious how the manager of the Trixie Motel, he says, oh, you're making your own t-shirt, how sad. It was extremely shady and funny as hell. I mean, she is just ridiculous. And then the comment she made, it's either make her own t-shirt or put a hit out on the family. Who says things like that? She wants to be mobbed up so bad. Girl, bye. No one's afraid of you, tiny woman. Anyway, Meredith eating caviar straight out of the container for breakfast was a little too damn much. Ma'am, where is your crackers? Where's your baked potato? Kathy Hilton would die if she just saw her eating caviar straight out of the container with no potato and extra sour cream i'm just saying anyway i don't even know that's that's rich people problems maybe all rich people just suck it right out the container i don't even know now listen whitney eating pizza for breakfast lisa barlow with her potato chips those are my people that's i can get down with that cold pizza potato chips last night's taco salad see that's why i'm a uh, plus size i'm just saying I, I you know what i'm watching what i'm eating you know what i mean i am goodness gracious leave me alone peeps stop talking about my food obsession okay so lisa and whitney are having this conversation and lisa says you know angie did come in hot and she really did she's showing that she's not really an adult a real adult with some common sense would have kept their ass at home don't go where you're not invited. If you are going to come, you would have come there with an open mind, willing to have a conversation. If you don't want to apologize, don't, but at least come in and have some grace. It was too much. Whitney trying to blame Meredith saying that she's using her tactic of not wanting to talk about something and, you know, blaming it on this three-year-old child. Okay. Leave this child out of this conversation. You know, Meredith is doing the same thing that you do. Last season, you had trauma. Last season, Justin lost his job. You know, you use that for everything. You used your abuse trauma all season long. If Heather had something to say that you didn't like, if Meredith had something to say that you didn't like, oh my God, I'm going to therapy, I've got trauma. I mean, if you can do it, why can't Meredith? I'm just saying. Now, Lisa brings up the whole Meredith knowing rumors and bringing up people's family. Okay, I get it. I really do. Last year, Lisa brought up Meredith's entire family, every member of the family. Meredith brought up Lisa and her family. Both of them were wrong. Both of them should not have done that. And listen, if you're going to be upset with Meredith for bringing up things that she may or may not know about Angie and her family, I don't want to go past the rest of this season and you start bringing up stuff that you know about people's families. If Meredith can't bring up stuff from people's families, you shouldn't bring it up either, Lisa. And I have a feeling that as the season progresses, Lisa's going to start throwing out stuff that she knows as well. I'm just saying these girls are, love to be hypocrites anyway you know just as you know show value and entertainment value i'm ready for meredith to spill what she knows you know i'm also ready for monica to tell us what she knows i'm just saying i mean that's not nice but still i'm ready to know then whitney says that she's going to take over meredith's trip that's the problem Whitney doesn't like it when Mary calls her a little girl or when Mary calls her a little miss or whatever it is that she calls her, but you act like a child. 
You really do. You created most of the drama on this trip. First of all, you brought Angie to this group trip when you should have talked to Meredith first. Now here you are planning to take over this woman's trip with this drag show without talking to her. A grown up and a friend who was really trying to add trust to their relationship and get back to where they used to be would have pulled Meredith to the side and said, hey, what were your plans for us later this afternoon? And when Meredith told you she didn't have any plans, because I don't care what Meredith says, she didn't have any plans. But when she told you she didn't have any plans, you could have said, hey, what do you think about this? I was going to ask Trixie if we could do this drag thing. You should have included the hostess of the trip before you made these plans. Go somewhere, little girl. Monica and Meredith have a little conversation. Monica explains to Meredith that she really did think that Angie's behavior was tacky and embarrassing. Meredith said it was also slander. And I have to say, Meredith, I love you, girl, but you slandered her too. Both of you were very slanderish out here. No, I do understand where Monica is coming from. You know, she's in a bit of a predicament. She wants to be friends with Angie, but she sees that Angie is acting a fool. She's new to this group, so she wants to be friends with Meredith as well. And she's trying to, you know, ride the fence down the middle. But at the same time, she's trying to hold Angie accountable for her behavior. And listen, as a friend, I appreciate when my friends say, Pia, what you just did or what you just said was rude. It was disrespectful and it's not nice. When they point out when I am acting ridiculous, which it doesn't happen that often, but sometimes my friends call it Pia with a little P. When Pia with a little P comes out, sometimes I can be extremely rude, very high pitched, very direct and aggressive, and my friends will call it out. One or all of the girls will pull me to the side and they'll say, you know, maybe you could put Pia with a little P up. You know, she's acted out, you know, and then at that point it snaps. You got me, you got me. I've acted a fool, calm down. And then the real me comes back, you know, but I'm just saying, sometimes as a friend, you have to be willing to call your friend out when they're acting a fool. I get called out, you know, and I just take my lumps. <laughs> I admit when I have showed out, I admit when I have done something that is quite embarrassing. And then I tell my friends, I apologize and we move forward. It doesn't happen a lot now because I've grown up, but mostly when I was, you know, younger in my early twenties, oh my gosh, I was a full on mess. You couldn't take me anywhere. I'm just saying, but now that I've grown up, it happens maybe twice a year. I'm just saying everybody has a, you know, mishap, you know, twice a year. I lose it for some reason or another. Anyway, moving on. Heather tried to blame the group. I'm sure she was just joking, but she tried to say it was a test of their friendship to see how many of those martinis they would allow her to drink. Listen, Heather, you are a grown woman, a business owner, multi-million dollar business owner, a mom, and you know how much you can take and how much you can't. You know that you are a two drink person. You should have cut yourself off at the second drink. You knew better. On Watch What Happens Live, she did admit that on that bus, she was vomiting and peeing. So we were right. She was peeing on herself on this Sprinter van, which if I was that Sprinter van driver, that woman would have never been able to get back on my Sprinter van. No, ma'am. I would have told her there's an Uber back here for you, just for you. You ride an Uber to every event. Now, listen, when they got on this Sprinter van and Mary found out they were doing an obstacle course, Mary wasn't here for it. No, ma'am. She said she is not here for this. She does not trust any of them. And she, you know, Mary is bougie as hell. And I don't know why people haven't realized that yet. Mary is bougie. Mary would have rather they had stayed at the Four Seasons and spent the whole day at the spa. Not out here in the drizzle, in the rain, trying to have a little kumbaya field day. This is not Mary's thing. But what I thought was hilarious is that she has got production running around to get her an oak milk latte. I said, what? Production should have threw her a bottle of water and said, Mary, shut the hell up. Either get your butt out there in practice field day or just sit here and be quiet. I mean, listen, Mary is 
a friend of okay she's not a full-fledged housewife she is not making full-fledged housewife money and mary just doesn't trust these people she's not she's not going to be bothered now meredith went out on twitter and she said take what you can get it's okay that mary wants to take baby steps with building trust in this group, especially after all she's been through with everyone here. And that is true when you think about it. Mary has been through a lot with this particular group. All I know is this episode, Mary was a full mood. And it's clear that Andy Cohen thinks that she is a mood as well. The last three weeks episodes of Watch What Happens Live, the top five have all been things about Mary. I mean, it's clear that Andy is happy that Mary is back. And you know what? A lot of people online were saying, why is she here? Why is she on the show? One thing is Mary is entertaining. Is she rude? Yes. Most of these women in this particular group are not used to people not kissing their ass. Mary's not going to do that. She's not an ass kisser. She's not going to do that. And that's one of the things that I like about Mary. I mean, when you think about it, it's clear that Mary doesn't like Whitney and she doesn't like Lisa and it's centered around everything that happened on Mary's last season. She doesn't feel that she can trust Lisa or Whitney. Remember when they brought Cameron onto the show, they talked all about Mary's church. They put all of Mary's business out there and she wasn't ready for it. Clearly she didn't show up to the reunion and she was let go. So she's still pissed off about it. So when they're out there doing that trust thing, the guy asked them to all say something that they would like to stop doing in the group. And Lisa says she'd like to stop putting people's business out there. Okay, if that's what you want, then be that example. Okay, you make sure you stay out of other people's business. Heather says that she wished that they would be more receptive and less competitive. Heather, welcome to the housewives. Meredith says she wants to treat people with respect and kindness. All right, Meredith, start giving out a lot of respect and kindness and let's see if it comes back to you. Heather and Angie were out there dancing and singing the whole time. I said, it's really nice to see them getting along, but you know, it's only for a moment. But when they get back on the Sprinter van and Meredith is saying that she wished that Mary would have joined in and been a part of the, you know, activity. Lisa tries to jump in and say something and Mary quickly shut it down. She said, nobody's talking to you, Lisa. I said, there you go again, Mary. Mary, why, why do you always have to shut the Lisa or any of the other girls down? Mary does not let anybody else get a chance to talk. Mary asked Lisa, does she have a mute button? And she says, no. And Mary said, well, you need one. I said, oh my God. But did I not stop you before you left and explain to you why I was not going? Yeah, and, but that was one thing. But don't you... don't interrupt. This is not between you and me. It's um, between Meredith. Don't do that. So and it, I, did I hurt you at all? No, no. I'm not talking to you. Like you, do you have a mute button? No, I don't. Well, you need to get one. I'm on play all the time. I'd like to choose activities that I'm ready to grow with that group. Like that was too soon for me, so. This isn't the group you were ready to do that with. Is that right? Not everyone. No. Not everyone? No. Okay. Mm -mm. Who are we excluding? No, Lisa. Okay. It's no, 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 I'm just that. curious. But the point is we wanted you there as our team. Okay, I get the point, Missy. Why would you come on a girl's trip with people you don't want to be with? You're probably one of the number one persons I would Oh, I know. Imagine. That's why I'm confronting okay. you. I know, because you said this and you told me and I'm like... <laughs> Listen, Whitney is annoying. She really is. She knows good and damn well that Mary does not mess with her or Lisa. Listen, the thing is, if I was in Mary's position, I would have definitely went out and did the trust activity. But Mary didn't have to. She didn't want to move forward with it. She was very clear with the both of them and the rest of the ladies who were listening in shock. She doesn't really mess with y'all. She doesn't trust you and she doesn't want to do these activities. I agree when Whitney says, well, why are you here? You know, personally, I wouldn't come on a trip with a whole bunch of girls that I don't like if I don't want to participate. But at the same time, this is Mary Cosby. And you know, she's not going to participate. She hates everything. If it's not five stars, she doesn't want to do it. So stop acting like you're not used to it. This is who Mary is and she's here. And you know, later in the episode, there was an activity that Lisa didn't want to participate in. Meredith didn't really want to participate in it either. 
So don't be all pissed off because Mary doesn't want to do field day. She's allowed to not want to do things as well. And honey, when Mary called Whitney Missy, I laughed so hard. Whitney is never going to get over little girl and Missy. If you would stop acting like a childish, immature girl, people wouldn't treat you like that. Mary is absolutely unbothered by Lisa and Whitney. Whitney says that Mary said at first that she had a bad hip. Then she said that she didn't want to do it. It doesn't matter, bad hip or not. Mary could have two good hips, two Sanya hips, two gold medal hips. She's not going to come out there in the rain and do field day with you people, period. You could see that when Whitney brought up that she was taking over the trip that Meredith was really pissed. She was not happy about this. And this wasn't right. It wasn't right. You know, Lisa gets all upset when she finds out that they're going to have to take off their makeup. She throws a full fledged fit. She has an emotional break. She, you know, breaks the fourth wall, which I'm going to stop calling it that. It's just normal now. You know, all of these housewives have decided they're just going to bring production in. Lisa brings one producer in. The next thing you know, the executive producer is there. She is crying. She's having a fit. She spends $60,000 a year on glam. She has flown Morgan in for, and she's paying for her $2,500 plus the flight. She wants her people. She doesn't want to be out here without her makeup on. She just can't stand it and listen. Clearly, it seems that there is an issue with Lisa. She doesn't like the idea of being on here without her makeup on. She, she's not happy about it. She says she goes grocery shopping with her makeup on. She has Morgan on retainer. Morgan does her makeup every single day. She doesn't even go out of her house without her makeup on. So that's something that she has going on with herself. And if she doesn't want to do it, she shouldn't have to. You know, would I have thrown a fit? No, I would have pulled Whitney and Meredith to the side and said, Whitney, this is a great idea. I love it, but unfortunately, I want Morgan to do my makeup and I don't want to do the whole drag thing. She doesn't have to do it if she doesn't want to. You know what I mean? Meredith doesn't have to do it if she doesn't want to. And Whitney thinking that it's okay for her to throw a fit because these ladies don't want to do what she planned on somebody else's trip. Girl, go have several seats, tiny woman. You are not in charge of these people. If they don't want to dress in drag, they don't have to. This was your plan, not theirs. They didn't know anything about it. Would I have behaved the way Lisa did? No, but at the same time, leave this woman the hell alone. Now, Monica gets all upset. She says, Lisa is privileged AF. You know what? If she's privileged AF, then that's just what it is. She's, she could afford to spend $60,000 a year for her makeup. One thing is for sure, I'm the reverse of Lisa Barlow. I would rather not have makeup on. I really just like moisturizer and a little lip gloss or lip balm, and I'm good. Lisa is different and everybody's allowed to be different. She don't want to leave the house without her makeup on. Leave her alone. Now, when they did the drag show, I thought it was really cute. You know what I mean? If I was in their place, I would fully go for it, fully go for it because you only live once and I think it would be kind of cool. But for those Mary, Lisa and Meredith who didn't partake, that was their right. They don't have to. I think that Whitney, Monica, Heather and Angela were great sports. They really were. Personally, I think that Heather looked the absolute best, but Monica absolutely deserved the win. Now, I thought that Mary was rude again to Lisa. They're all sitting there having a little something to eat. Lisa says, it's really quiet in here. Mary said, everybody's been quiet to me all evening. And then when Lisa tries to talk to her, she says, no, don't do that. Don't make it fake. I mean, damn, you know, I know that she doesn't really like Lisa and Whitney, but at least Lisa is trying. I thought that was a little too much, Mary. She was just trying to be nice. Mary is something else. I don't know how they're ever going to get past this when Mary won't even let the woman talk to her. Lisa was correct in her confessionals when she said that Mary is definitely not getting the participation trophy. No, ma'am, because the woman doesn't participate in anything. You know, Monica saying that, Lisa's insecure. I don't think that she should do that. You know, as a woman who supports another woman, clearly she's got some thoughts and issues around her style, her makeup, her appearance. Don't tear her down. You know, let her do what she's going to do. And, you know, 
Angie was right. Lisa has her own style. She really does. And I think Lisa has good style. I love the clothes that she wears. You know, she's just Lisa. This is her look. This is her stick. Let her have it. She did wear that ridiculous thong, you know, coin belt bra top to a five star restaurant just the day before. Give her a break. Then they have the whole argument in the Sprinter van. You didn't dress up. I am dressed up. I'm in head to toe couture. I got Valentino shoes on, a Fendi bag, and beautiful eyeshadow. Right, but it was to dress up in drag. This is drag for me. Do you want to hold my flamingo? No, it's Just fine. Say what you're in all honesty, the ring thing is hard for me. Only because I'm going through my own shit and I kept trying to tell you your boys are healthy, your husband is there. It's just so tone deaf to hear you talk about money and your successes and the things you have and the G-Wagon and the Porsche. And maybe because you've lived this lifestyle for so long, you're outside or removed from most of America. I work my ass off and I'm not gonna apologize for one bit of me. Okay. I'm, not, I'm done doing that. I like rude. myself. That's what's rude. You don't know me, so don't judge me. Or I am so sorry for what you're going through. Divorce you is horrible. Look at how you're oh. acting right now. No, no, with no, your no, 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 no. Don't use. No, this you is genuinely don't give a. This is no, you don't give a. No, you don't give a no, your attitude is so rude. You, you, you really are shallow. You're telling. You said I you're so care. theatrical. Bring it down a little bit. Hey, with me, last. Stay there. You're living up everybody. No. You're such a hypocrite. Who? Who are you going to flip to next? Who? Who you Actually, actually no one can next. hear you. No one can hear you because your dog is barking for you. So no one can hear you So right I was a bitch You're a little night, chihuahua. Lisa's talking about her ring. She talks about all of her jewelry, her cars, her house. Now, like last week, I'm riding the fence again. I see Lisa's side. I see Monica's side. However, I don't think that Lisa should have to censor herself for Monica's feelings. You know, at one point, Monica, you were doing so much better because you were married and you said that your husband was taking care of you and the children and all of your financial needs. Lisa didn't make you have sex with your brother-in-law for 18 months. Lisa's not responsible for your divorce and your current situation. You know, I am sorry that you are going through a financial struggle right now. I'm sorry for everything that you are going through, but you can't hold Lisa responsible for that. Lisa is just living Lisa's life. Do I think from time to time that Lisa is a little tone deaf? Yes, I do. But multiple housewives across multiple franchises are tone deaf. They have been living this rich life for such a long time. They act as if they have totally forgotten that there are people that have less than them. You know, later in the episode, Lisa says that she definitely understands middle class people, and I'm paraphrasing, and that she thinks that middle class people have $60,000 rings. I would just like to say, you know, as a middle class person, I can only speak for myself, but I don't have a $60,000 ring. And I don't think that as a middle class person who pays my mortgage every month, that I would want to spend $60,000 on a ring. If I had $60,000, or if some man wanted to purchase me a $60,000 ring, I would prefer that he gave me 50,000 so I could just put that on my mortgage and buy me a cheaper ring. I'm just saying that's just me. Everybody has the right to their own thoughts, their own opinions, but that's just my opinion. I understand where Monica is coming from. Being a single mom, that is a struggle and trying to make sure that ends meet. I get it. But at the same time, Throwing this woman under the bus is not okay either. She's living her life and you're living your life. You cannot hold her responsible for that. Lisa should not have to censor herself to be around you. However, I do appreciate Monica. I love that she stands up for herself against all of these women when they come at her wrong. Monica plays no games and she is one of my favorite housewives. Monica and Jen from the OC. Those two are two of my favorite housewives, especially new housewives. You know, when she said that Angie was Lisa's dog and that Angie was stuck up Lisa's ass, I was here for it. And then later when Meredith called Angie a pit bull, I said, oh my gosh, I was here for it. You know, Lisa even brought up that bag that Monica purchased, that Louis Vuitton bag. I thought it was weird that Lisa knew off the top that that bag was $5,000. But listen, if you want to call Lisa insecure, we might have to say that you're insecure too. You were so insecure, you bought that bag to show off. 
listen, I get it, Monica, I really do, but please don't try to use Lisa being tone deaf and Lisa's money as your storyline. One thing is for sure, the best thing for you to do, Monica, is just pay Lisa dust. Ignore all those comments. Don't let the rest of the girls know that you are bothered by Lisa and all her money. Don't be bothered, just go on. Monica, you are good enough just like you are. You are doing the best you can. We all are. Lisa's life is different from yours and it's okay. It's different from most of us. Monica was right when she said that Lisa lives 1%. That's true. I couldn't imagine having as much money as Lisa or as much money as Heather or Lisa Vanderpump, any of those women. But I still live my life and you do too, Monica. And you know what? You're moving up. You're on the same show as this lady. Stop this. Now later when they get into that bar that Mary doesn't want to go to, I said, Jesus, Mary, are you going to go to anything? Mary ends up getting the whole production crew and the Sprinter van to go put an order in for McDonald's. This woman gets a big gigantic bag full of stuff for McDonald's, which actually it turned out in the end that Mary was the smart one. Mary said, why do I need to be in here getting screamed at, yelled at, and all this back and forth and being embarrassed when I could just get me a good McDonald's fish filet and some french fries? team Mary now Whitney did too much she just had to try to manufacture an argument with Meredith why bring up this whole situation and try to act as if you are so appalled oh my gosh and bring this three-year-old up why is this three-year-old involved leave this child alone I blame Meredith for bringing the child up and I also blame Whitney leave it alone Whitney and Angie were trying so hard to create some drama. It looked fake. It looked manufactured. It looked like they were just doing the best they could to start a fight so they could stay on camera or something, especially the way Whitney came back over and was like, so I'm back. Back from where? Hell. Then Angie's going to try to get all smart with Meredith. Meredith did such a good job just paying Angie dust. She turned her whole body away from Angie while Angie still kept trying to talk to her. Angie, listen, Angie and Whitney, you both failed trying to take down Meredith. It did not work. Angie looks at Meredith and says she looks like a trampoline with eyes. Meredith laughed her butt off and she says, with that face, I wouldn't be talking. And then continues to to laugh and turn back around. I said, well, what the shit? You know, the whole time while they're acting a fool in this public place, Mary's enjoying her McDonald's in peace and quiet on the bus. I mean, listen, team Mary, okay, Mary stayed out of the fray. Anyway, so far I am loving this season. You guys get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye.